Hey everybody, welcome to our tutorial on the basics of lighting an icon. This is part of our beginner's guide series. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of lighting using the uh, lighting tools, as well as some spotlights and some point lights and all that fun stuff, as well as a cool little trick called image-based lighting. So we're going to be trying to recreate this scene here in which you see uh, Mason hanging out in front of a, uh, a junker car there in the corner with the blinking light. We're going to try to be recreating uh, this sort of environment, this dark, greedy street scene, in just a moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop this project right now. And the first thing we need to do is delete all the lights in the scene. So we're going to start from a very dark scene. Okay, so here we are at a very dark scene. This is uh, where we're going to start from. We're going to add, be adding our lights one by one here. Uh, first of all, let's start off with what you start with normally when you uh, begin your iClone project. And that is two lights. We have two directional lights in our scene. Uh, to find those, we'll go to the Scene tab right here. And you can see we have a key light and a rim light. Let's just expand this a little bit over here. And notice that these are currently both deactivated. Now, if I activate these by selecting these icons here, you can see how those light up the scene right there. And if I select one of them and I use the forward slash key, I can change the direction of the main light in my scene. Now, directional lights are useful for things such as uh, sunlight. You can see if we have something like this, it'll make a nice uh, you know, midday uh, scene on the street and stuff like that but we're looking for something a bit darker and grittier. And then we have this rim light, you can select that and also use the forward slash key and you can move that around. And this one's a little bit darker in color and it's meant to kind of complement the uh, key light. So uh, we can just uh, disable those for now, but first of all, I'm gonna show you that we can actually change the color of these. Now, if we select this color swatch in the key uh, light right there, we can change it to something like a nice red color and we can have a really kind of cool almost like a sunset feel if we change that to maybe an uh, orange or something like that. That's more like a sunset type uh, look right there. So that's how easy it is to create those kind of lighting situations. Um, I normally don't use directional lights for indoor scenes, um, but for outdoor this one works just fine. But for this tutorial we're going to try to create something a bit darker. Uh, so we're going to disable these directional lights right now and start from scratch using, if we go into our content tab, uh, we're going to be using a light tool. So let's go to our props here and in our props folder we have uh, we should have a folder called light tools there we go light tools and you can see there's a number of different uh basic uh light presets that are created here um, and these all have lights attached so we'll deconstruct these in just a moment but first of all i'm going to zoom out and see what we got here in our scene we got that car the wall the garbage bin and uh, the phone booth and just a, a kind of a flat wall back there um, for our background uh, because we're only having one kind of angle we don't really need to worry about all the other angles so let's go ahead and add in our first light tools uh, let's go down to street lights I'm gonna just click and drag this into my scene right here and you can see we add that into our scene just like that and we already have some pretty decent lighting if we zoom in on the characters face you can see it's kind of cool it's kind of a uh, lighting from above um, let's zoom out a little bit and see the height of this street lamp is fairly high if we want to decrease the size of that, we can press the R hotkey and use our scale gizmo to kind of scale it down. Something like that may be a bit more suitable. And then if we want to change the direction, let's just uh, zoom this over a little bit here, expand this. And if we want to change the direction, you can see currently right now, um, the Z axis is pointing up and down, the blue axis right there. We can change this to 180 degrees and turn it the other way. And now it's uh, facing the street right there. So now we have this street light facing the street. We can maybe move it a little bit back. And if we wanted to add more lights into this scene, uh, we can just click and drag them from our content library. Or I can simply hold the control key and I can click and drag this one over here. Because we've already resized it, we want the next one to be the same size as well. That would make a carbon copy of the first one. As you can see here, we can move that a little bit closer, but a little bit further back right here. Something like that will be just fine. Now let's take a look at these uh, lights. Let's take a look at what they're made of because every light tool has a specific iClone light inside of it. And let's uh, focus on this first one right here. And let's go over to our scene tab and let's find our street light. So this is a street, street light one. Um, so let's twirl this down here and find out what's inside of it. You can see that we currently have one spotlight inside of it. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that um, you currently can't see it. But if we make it visible, there's our spotlight right there, just shining directly down on the ground. We can change the angle of that. We can change the direction or, or the color or anything like that. 
But we're not going to mess around with that right now. We're just going to make it invisible again. And then take a look at the qualities over here on the right hand side. Now you can adjust these uh, qualities um, individually or you can use our presets right here. You'll notice that when I added these two light tools in, we have these little uh, panels that appear on the top here. And the one thing that you can change is the brightness of these lights, the intensity of these lights. So if I select this one, I increase it, you can notice that we can turn it off or on. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see that better. Um, we can change the light intensity if we bring it up like that. There you go, bring it up to the maximum value. I like to keep it fairly high. I think that looks uh, quite nice right there. We can do the same thing to the other street lamp right there. Now you can also go into the individual light itself and adjust that, but we're not going to worry about that in this tutorial. We're going get, to get to that in more advanced tutorials. So that's basically how you can just, you know, adjust the, uh, the brightness of your lights and everything like that. So we have these two lights in our scene. We can maybe move this one a little bit over, something like that. All right. So we have our two street lights. Now, if you recall in our introduction, we had all those lights along the wall as well. And those were also just uh, simple lighting tools. And we can find those by going to a uh, wall lamp down here. We can add a wall lamp in. Let's kind of move over to this side a little bit more and let's add in those wall lamps. So I'm gonna add this near to the wall right there. And let's just go to the side. We can maybe move it a little bit up, something like that. Kind of make it so it's attached or it looks like it's attached to the wall anyways. I think that's fine right there and now if I want to create maybe four or five copies of this of these it might be cumbersome to kind of uh, you know control click each individual one and in addition I want them to kind of be uh, separated from each other equally now let's take a look at the uh, what makes up this light first this one's a little bit different from the uh, last light tool that I showed you and let's go into the scene tab right here and open up our wall lamp and you can see there's another spotlight but this one the color is a little bit different and if we reveal it, you can see it's kind of facing the wall. I can use the E hotkey to rotate this a little bit. And you can see that we can kind of move it a little bit more so it's shining on the street. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see that. And if I go up here to the wall lamp, the uh, panel on the right here, we can increase the intensity of that as well. And that'll increase the amount of light shining down. And notice it also increases the glow map on the light itself. Now, if you're wondering, you can go into materials once you have your wall map selected and we have a glow map right here. We can also do that by selecting the glow map. Oh, we have to select the glow map first and changing the strength right here. We can also change the intensity of that. That doesn't affect any of the lighting. It just affects the appearance of the actual prop. So we won't worry too much about that. That's a little bit more advanced, um, but let's just go and let's go with this and let's leave our spotlight at maybe uh, this angle right here. I think that looks kind of cool right there. We're lighting up the street a little bit as well. And let's go ahead and select the wall lamp. And what we're gonna do is uh, first we'll make this invisible so we can't see it. And let's make some copies of these. So the way we can do that is select the wall map, uh, wall lamp rather, and then go up to edit. We can use multiple duplicate or control K. And that'll create some duplicates of my light. And say, for example, if I wanted a bit more, maybe I wanted uh, five of them or five of them all together, we can make four duplicates, press enter. And there we have a few more lights. And if I use the W hotkey to bring up my movement gizmo, I can just go ahead and spread these out a little bit more along our wall here. Let's go ahead and move that along here. And you can see, boom, it's that easy to create some pretty cool uh, lighting. Let's have this one right over the stop sign, I think right there and I think that looks kind of cool right there so we'll just leave those lights uh, where they are and press OK and now we have those uh, cool street lights now you may recall that one of the street lights was blinking so let's go ahead and select maybe uh, this one right here over here and let's make this one blink now the way we can do that is you can see when I select the uh, the object on the scene that our uh, control panel on the right lights up so we can tell which one it is we have this uh, highlighted in green right here. Now we can activate the light effects and then go over here and select something like alert. We can select broken or we can select fire. I'm just gonna select broken for now and then we'll close this down. And then if I press play, you can see we have this broken light. And the duration that I press play for is the duration the light is gonna be broken for. So if I stopped right now, it wouldn't be broken after this. We can kind of make it go for, go for about uh, three quarters of the uh, 
of the project here, something like that. I think that's fine right there. So there we have our broken light. And that's about all the lighting tools we're going to add into our scene. So uh, we, we have those two lights, uh, you know, our street lights and our uh, wall lights set up. But let's take a look at this uh, phone booth right here. We're going to add in our own custom light to this phone booth uh, that we have over here. Now to create a light, it's as easy as going up to create and selecting light. And we're going to add in a spotlight in this case. So the spotlight will add right into the middle of our scene right there. And we can kind of uh, you know, spend time dragging it over to this phone booth. Or we can actually just use this Align To tool right up here and then go Align To and then select the phone booth. And then we can select the center of the phone booth and align it on the X, Y, and Z axes. And it'll be right in the middle, right smack dab in the middle of the phone, bo uh, phone booth right there. So you can see that uh, from all angles, it's pretty much in the middle. But we want it to be facing directly downwards. So we can just go ahead in the Modify panel, you can see Transform. It's rotated at 45 degrees on the uh, X or the uh, red arrow axis right there. If we want it to be straight down, we can simply go to uh, zero right here and have that directly downwards, uh, facing directly downwards. And then we can move our spotlight up like this. So it's kind of simulating a light coming from inside the booth right there. And you can see if we zoom in on our character, we're not getting much light on the character, much white light, maybe a little bit down here. So we can actually increase the angle of that spotlight beam. And we can see the result right there. We can get some light on the car over there if we want. Um, but we'll kind of maybe try and leave it at something like this. We just want kind of the side of his face to light up. We don't want too much of the car to light up for sure. The light wouldn't be that strong, maybe something like that. And then we can also increase the intensity of this light by going to our multiplier value and selecting something like a two, I think would be fine. And there we go, that's kind of what we're looking for right there. So we have our uh, light coming from our phone booth, cast, casting light on the side of our character there, which is pretty cool. And we have almost everything set up in the scene that we had at the beginning, except there's a couple more things. And the first thing you'll notice is that the background is actually very dark. Um, the buildings are very dark. And that's really not um, what, we, what we want in this scenario. We kind of want to have some ambient light from the city and stuff like that. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, the first way is to use the point light. Now, the reason you wouldn't use directional lights in this case is I'll show you, first of all, we'll go to create and let's go to light and directional light. Let's go ahead and try to, uh, you can see it adds in the uh, light section right there of our scene manager. If I use my forward slash key and decide to shine it on there, you can see it's also shining on the ground and everything like that. It's kind of messy and it just doesn't look really that, that good in this case. Uh, it's not very accurate. So let's go ahead and just delete that directional light. And what I'm going to do is add a point light instead. So we're going to go create light and point light. And then I'm going to just add this point light, or rather move this point light over there behind the wall. Whoops, not too far. Maybe somewhere around here. And we'll just move it up a little bit. What I want to do is kind of highlight that uh, those apartments there in the back. We'll just move that light over here and closer to the building. Maybe something like that I think would be okay. And... We won't actually be able to see the point light, uh, which is good because we just want to light up the back of the building right here. We can maybe increase the range. So this means it'll this means it'll light up a larger area, maybe something like that. We don't we don't want it to light up the street down there like that too much. Maybe something like that is pretty good. It kind of simulates you know light coming from uh, somewhere else on the street or something like that. And you can add another one wherever you want, but. For our scene, we're only going to have a single angle and it's going to be like that, so we don't really have to worry about that. We can make that point light invisible so we can't see it. And it's going to be like light coming from um, across the wall or something like that. So there's pretty much all of our lighting taken care of except for one small thing. And I'm going to talk about something called image-based lighting. Now image-based lighting is very useful because it creates a sort of an ambient lighting in your scene. And to access the Im image-based lighting, you have to go to your visual tab right here. And in your lighting tab, up, or in your atmosphere tab up here, you'll have a section called image-based lighting. So you can see all the other stuff up here. We'll talk about those in separate tutorials. This is a little bit advanced, but it's very useful for creating ambient light in your scene without using directional light. So let's go ahead and select IBL on. And currently nothing happens because we don't have an image map loaded into our IBL slot. So let's go ahead and select that by double clicking it. And I have an image, image map uh, already pre-prepared. I'm gonna go ahead and preview this so you can see it. And it's just basically a map uh, 
1280 by 720 image of some city lights that are all blurred out. And this is sort of the perfect image for this sort of scenario where you have a night scene and you want some various, you know, city lights shining in random places, just creating some ambient light. We even have some red and some blue and some yellow in there as well. So let's go ahead and close this down first of all. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. And you might not notice much of a difference at first, but let's take a look. Uh, let's focus on uh, Mason's face here. And you can see on Mason's face, if we increase the strength by quite a bit, notice that you get a lot of red, a lot of, uh, you know, red and weird uh, fluorescent colors on his face right there. Uh, we don't want to increase the strength too much. But let's take a look at what this softness slider does. If I increase this softness slider, notice that that kind of peters out a little bit, it sort of fades. Uh, whereas if the softness is very low, you can see, notice some very noticeable uh, light patterns on his face like that. So normally I try to keep the lighting or the softness slider a little bit low. So you barely get a, you barely get um, any sharp lighting appearances on, on, on his face or on other objects in the scene. And then decrease the strength a little bit. Maybe it's something, you know, almost the same as the softness, I think, would be good right there. And then you get that ambient lighting. You can also do that. You notice that it just kind of lights everything up in the scene. You can also do that for the back there as well, where the where the point light is we just added. Notice that it lights up the uh, the background scene like that. But I like to keep, keep things a little bit darker, especially in this scene. It's a little bit darker and grittier, like Mason, some detective uh, standing outside his car late at night. And uh, that's pretty much it. So there you can see with a couple of simple light tools and a single point light and a single spotlight, We've created a cool uh, scene like this with some fairly decent lighting. Now one difference to remember between point lights and spotlights is point lights won't cause shadows, whereas spotlights will cause uh, shadows. So for example, if I go into my scene tab right here and I select my uh, point light or my rather my spotlight right here and I decide to uh, you know change the direction of this a little bit, notice that it's uh, right now it's pointing directly up and down. If I move it a little bit further down and maybe to the side a little bit by rotating it, notice that we can create a fairly decent shadow um, on that uh, garbage bin right there. And it's kind of cre creating that shadow right there. A point light won't do that because a point light is kind of used for very local ambient lighting. Whereas the IBL is used for lighting the entire scene up, uh, you can use uh, point lights rather to do some very local lighting. Let's kind of go back in here and uh, maybe we can uh, straighten that out a little bit. I kind of do like that um, shadow that it creates on the ground right there. We want me want to have a bit straighter like that. I think something like that will be fine. Cool. I think we're good right there. And we'll just make that invisible so we can't see it. And we have our nice uh, scene right there. And that cool shadow on the ground. I like that. And then let's go ahead and find our perfect uh, camera angle, which we had before. Maybe something like this looks a little bit more intimidating. Or a little bit more emotional like he's staring up into the city sky or something like that and uh, something like that I think will be pretty cool and you can mess around with all the camera angles and everything like that later but that's basically it that's our introduction to lighting and iClone we will have a lot of other tutorials that go into more depth on specific features that I've covered here but that's kind of how to create a really simple and easy lighting scene uh, scene with uh, lighting tools and uh, your simple point light and spotlight and everything like that. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you learned some uh, some of the basics of lighting an iClone and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials on this topic and others.